Today, I'm gonna to tell you all 10 hard truths about visiting New York City that hardly anybody talks about on YouTube. Keep on watching even if you're a seasoned traveler, trust me. This is important. New York is not Disney World, no matter what Mickey Mouse and Times Square tells you. It's not a controlled environment that you pay admission to. It's New York. You could be exposed to things that shock and surprise you, especially if you're coming from a small town. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The city has issues with homelessness, and it's likely something you're going to be exposed to. You're going to be walking through Midtown Manhattan in front of Port Authority, in front of Penn Station. You're going to see people sleeping on the street, looking down disheveled, possibly shouting out loud. It's really sad and I hope they get the help that they need. But my point is, if you come to New York with the impression that this city is just a romantic place all the time and everybody goes to rooftop bars and drinks cocktails like sex in the city, and I don't want you to be disappointed if you run into some unsavory behavior. I mean, I've heard from tourists who've said they saw a mentally unstable person shouting on the subway and it ruined their trip. And I'm not telling you these things to scare you. I just want you to be informed. If you're interested in volunteering with the homeless, we did a great video about the Holy Apostle Soup Kitchen. Check out the link in the description. Ready? You see that? The barrio. I think New Yorkers get a bad reputation for not being friendly, but if you act like a spoiled tourist, locals will not like you. We've talked on this channel about not crowding sidewalks, not putting love locks on bridges, asking people, hey, how do you get to 500 Bowery Street when you could just say, how do you get to the corner of Houston and Bowery? The point I'm trying to get at here is respecting locals' time and you know, not doing things like stopping on the staircase to check directions when you're in a subway station. I've seen that one before, or littering, or rushing the subway doors before people have time to get out, although there's plenty of locals who are guilty of that as well. Just remember, New York is not a photo opportunity. Every square inch of it, pay attention to where you're taking your pictures. Yeah, don't do stuff like this, guys. Don't do stuff like this. Don't, no, 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 don't, don't block people. Just kidding, it's my friend Christian. Hey. <laughs> He's standing in. Shout out to my friend Evan, a native New Yorker, for consulting me on this video. Appreciate your tips. And there's a lot of legend that surrounds some of New York's most famous eateries. Not all of it is always warranted, though, in my opinion. Now, I'll admit, Defara Pizza in Brooklyn absolutely lives up to the hype. But then there's others. There's Katz, there's Magnolia Bakery, there's Joe's Pizza. And I'll be honest, I have found better deli sandwiches, cupcakes, and pizza in New York. But I'm not gonna tell you where they are because I don't want them to be full of tourists. No, I'm just kidding. I put tons of this stuff on my channel. But seriously, don't always buy into the hype about really popular places in New York City. Talk to your local friends. A lot of times, the best places are in neighborhoods you wouldn't even expect to visit. This may sound like common sense in a big city, but I think it needs to be restated. If you're walking around Midtown Manhattan, smiling and making eye contact with everybody, you're gonna invite the wrong types of attention. Oh, look, that nice monk is handing out free bracelets. Look, Elmo's calling me over for a photo. Oh, a free CD, stuff like that. We've made not one, not two, but three separate videos about tourist traps and scams in New York, which I highly recommend you check out. And I'm not trying to sound like a jerk here, but when random people approach you on the streets in Manhattan, many times it's some sort of a hustle. So be careful about that. If you are curious, we are filming in Long Island City along the waterfront. This is not a touristy spot at all. It's mostly locals and families. We're gonna make a video about it someday soon. A reason many people move to New York is to be anonymous, and that's a reason many celebrities live in New York City as well. We don't have the celebrity worship culture, I would say, that LA does. So if you see celebrities out and about, they're with their families, I would say leave them alone. I have passed tons of celebrities in New York in the last 10 years, but YouTubers don't count. So if you see me, feel free to say hi. I hardly ever go to Long Island City. You think it's me excited as somebody that lives here, some, these amazing views. I feel like a news anchor right now. I'm about to read you the news. We got New York behind me. In New York, it's so easy to get wrapped up in the beautiful architecture or posting photos to your Instagram that you might not pay attention 
And let me tell you, one or two blocks can make a world of difference depending on where you are. Now, this goes for areas that are outside of your normal tourist hubs, but I just want to reiterate, always keep your wits about you. Pay attention, and if something feels off, definitely go with your gut. So many review sites like Yelp or TripAdvisor have reviews that are either really good or really bad about places, not to mention fake reviews. And if you're basing your entire itinerary on TripAdvisor, you're getting the opinion mostly of tourists. Base your trip off of your interests, not just review sites. And if you are curious about legitimate reviews, I'm a big fan of the infatuation.com. They have some amazing reviews. They're local New Yorkers. Another good source would be Mikey Chen, a YouTuber, does some great reviews of other places. Point being, don't just trust the review sites only. We're about to get birria, which is the hottest new taco trend in New York City. Listo. We got it. <laughs> My stomach is trembling right now. <laughs> With birria tacos, I love the soft shells. Mm. That's happiness, folks. I'm not making that up. Mm. This is so good. Tijuana, here I come. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this one. I had a great trip to New York, but my Airbnb was so far away that going home every night really sucked. If you see a great deal for a hotel near JFK Airport, don't take it, unless your flight's the next day. I don't care how cheap it is, or Eastern Brooklyn, or Long Island, not if it's your first trip. The money you save in cost, you lose in time. And I value time more than money, especially on a short trip. Let's say that you're staying in Midtown Manhattan and you have a Broadway show at night. You go back to your hotel, three, four o'clock, you rest, take a nap, take a shower, change clothes, you're fresh for the rest of the night. Now let's say you're staying in Eastern Brooklyn or deep in Queens. You got a one hour train ride back to Jamaica, Queens. Then you come one hour to Broadway and an hour to go home at the end of the night. That's three hours of commuting and you're in the same city. And if you're going to be staying outside of Manhattan, make sure that with public transportation, you're at a maximum 30 minutes away from either lower Manhattan or midtown Manhattan. I realize that New York has a great reputation for being really accessible by subway, but trust me, it's not always the case. And I'm gonna tell you my story today of commuting to Long Island City, Queens from Park Slope, Brooklyn. I walked to the R train to find out that it's coming in 19 minutes. So it's faster to actually walk to the station that I was gonna transfer at. When I get to the G train, I find out that the Queensbound subway isn't running today. So I have to go one station in the opposite direction, then turn back and head towards Queens. Total time lost, I don't know, 30 minutes. And this is something that was completely unplanned. There's a lot of reasons that locals complained constantly about the MTA. Issues on weekends, issues on evenings. The subway system is a blessing in New York, but don't always rely on it to be perfect. I promise you, you're gonna get burned on it at some point. You know what the average cost to see a Broadway show was last season? $123. And if you wanna get in to see something like Hamilton, you're gonna dish out about $300. Add it up, let's say a family of four, $500 to get into a show. Budget for this. I'll say it, I think Broadway is worth it and you should spend the money, but know this going in advance. And if you don't care what show you see, you could go to the TKTS booth the day of and get discounted tickets. And if you're watching this video in March of 2021, I wanna let you know that Broadway is on schedule to reopen this September. And I promise you when it reopens, it's gonna be big. You need a plan. This is where you have to buy the Here Be Bar Guide to New York City for only four easy installments of $99.99. No, seriously, guys. New York is a kind of place you've got to do your homework before you go because there's just so much to do here. Watch guides on YouTube. Watch my channel. Watch Sarah Funk. Read blogs. Have a list of places that you must visit and then keep the rest open-ended. Trust me, whatever your interest is, you can find it here. Check out my 15 Common Tourist Mistakes video linked here if you haven't seen it yet. Subscribe to the channel for more. Guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, till next time.